honor the retirees, and we have the honor of honoring three completely honorable retirees. Um, so uh, we're very, very uh, um, unhappy uh, that these folks are going to be leaving us. We are very, very happy for the uh, new lives ahead of them. Um, and so we have someone speaking on behalf of each person. And so I think we're going to start with Joe Rubenstein, who is going to speak for uh, uh, Bob Helsebeck. So thank you. Um, I'm happy to speak for Bob. I, I teach anthropology in the sociology anthropology program. Louder. Louder. Yeah, you got chat. Okay. Uh, I teach anthropology in the sociology anthropology program, and Bob has just been our rock. Um, through all these years, uh, we knew that we could count on Bob. He does all the classes that we didn't want to do. <laughs> he did the intro class, and he did the methods class, and he did a social psych class, which was great as well. So we are, we are forever grateful to Bob because whenever we had a problem, whenever there was a question, he was always the steady hand uh, for our program. But I'm going to, to ratchet it up one more level because to use a phrase that I'm sure all of you remember. It seems to me, <laughs> oh, does it seem to me that really Bob made even more of a mark uh, in the faculty assembly, and I'll call it the faculty assembly, okay? Uh, in which he reminded us of how Stockton was formed, he reminded us of the core values of Stockton, and to use another word that is, will be forever associated with Bob, he reminded us of the vision thing. <laughs> so whenever we decided to do those horrendous subscripts, I will say they were horrendous. You don't know, because I was here before most of you, that we lost that vote by one. <laughs> And to this day, I brew an S, and V, and H. But Bob was great. Bob always reminded us that uh, we had to go past all the bureaucratic stuff and think about why we were teaching and why we formed this college. Of course, the college develops. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Uh, for that, Bob, I'll be forever grateful to you to remind us always that there is a real core that you and your cohorts established for us, and um, we always look back uh, toward toward that and uh, you know, as we evolve. So I want to thank you so much uh, for you know helping me in sociology and anthropology and just helping our college, so uh, I really appreciate it. I know you're going to have a great life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think Bob has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me. <laughs> it's just been a wonderful run. Getting to know so many of you uh, has just been a real privilege. It's just been life-changing. And to start at a college when it first starts is just a rare opportunity. I want to say something, though, and to urge you to be conscious of, because I can't stop giving advice. <laughs> and that is the senior faculty. Do not go to sleep at the wheel when it comes to governance. We have a good tradition here of folks stepping up. If you notice the leadership in the union, the leadership of the assembly, they, they tend to cross over. Uh, and, and we don't have department chairs, so some of the senior faculty that would be at that level and influencing the administration, we don't have. So what we have to do instead is step up and get involved in the Senate and make your voice heard. They need worthy partners or opponents, depending on the issue. Mm -hmm. And so it really, we do a good job here of watching out for the, the new faculty, we have a, a, a clause in the Constitution that at least 10% of the Senate must be untenured faculty. That's an extraordinary statement. 
we don't have the comparable statement that at least 10% of the Senate must be full professors with X number of years here. We should have that attitude, though, that this is important and we should step up and do it. So that's my party piece of advice. I think David Leckler is going to speak uh, uh, for Carolyn Gutierrez, who's going to, a uh, librarian who many, many years, uh, who's going to also be retired. Well, to Marianne Trail's horror, I like never write anything down, so don't <laughs> anybody tell her she's not here. But, and in as much as this is for Carolyn, I thought, you know, how could I not start with a bassoon, uh, a bassoon a buffoon joke? A bassoon joke. So here's one for the musicians. Uh, what's the difference between an oboe and a bassoon? Four feet. Good, good. The bassoon burns longer. But, but an oboe makes excellent kindling if you need to light a bassoon. Now, speaking as a male, one of the wonderful things about working in a profession that's historically dominated by women such as library science, is that you get to work with a lot of strong, dynamic women. Now, you're probably all thinking that I'm referring to Mary Ann. She's the edgy one. And I can get away with saying that because she's in Florida at the moment, uh, visiting family. But Carolyn Gutierrez is another quieter but nevertheless effective leader within the library. Her skill in particular is the innocent voicing of the necessary but impolite question. As the, uh, oh, he's not in the corner anymore. As the drummer, wherever he might be, could attest. <laughs> um, if there's a committee project that's threatening to tread water, it's Carolyn who can be counted on to ask, yes, but when will that report be read? <laughs> or shouldn't we set a deadline now? Or yes, but who will be making that phone call to contact the vendor, the consultant, the candidate? It's times like that that I find it comforting not to be wearing one of those administrative hats. Now, Carolyn was the first soul at Stockton to assume sort of a personality in my mind while I was still out in Kansas City going through the application process for my job. Carolyn created an online survey form here at the college to find out how many students and faculty played musical instruments as part of an effort to establish uh, the Stockton concert band that became a re reality, at least for a time, in 2001 through 2003. And you have to remember, those are comparatively early days for internet polling, too. And given the herding cats mentality uh, or ethos at this institution in terms of standardizing any sort of software usage, God only knows how she pulled it off. But there I was, 1,200 miles away, filling out that survey form with the comforting knowledge that although I was giving up participation in a couple of community bands in the Kansas City area to move to my new job, that nevertheless, instrumental music was very much alive here at Stockton, thanks largely to Carolyn's efforts. And what, you might ask, was a librarian doing uh, making such a survey? Well, what any good librarian does, she was facilitating the gathering of knowledge needed to make uh, an informed decision, in this case, as far as the viability of establishing such a performing group here at the college. And of course, that aspect of working between disciplines is part of what makes Stockton Stockton, why we really are New Jersey's distinctive college. Now, music is, of course, an important part of Carolyn's life, and if you've had the chance to watch her perform, for example, when the Woodwind Quintet has given brown bag concerts, the organizing which was another one of her contributions uh, to the life of the community, along with other people, I'm sure, but she was very much a driving force there, you'll have seen her sort of dig in and sail through the flowing passages on that bassoon, firing off a seemingly endless string of notes, reminding me of nothing so much as a long-distance runner, just alive in the moment and the movement of that, of that passage. Now, Mary Ann Trail, who's worked with Carolyn for a couple of decades, told me that she had a lot of Carolyn stories for this talk. But when I pressed her for details, she admitted that uh, most of them couldn't be repeated in public. <laughs> Which, coming from Mary Ann, says something in itself. <laughs> but one that she did share, which exemplifies Carolyn's dy dynamism and focus, involved Carolyn teaching a library session in a classroom with so-called stadium seating, they would tears. And apparently she was walking back down the aisle towards the uh, chalkboard, missed the last step, went down, bounced right back up without missing a stride or breaking her sentence. <laughs> now that energy can be a little bit overwhelming. For the last several years, the three of us have had sort of a coffee club here in the office 
with me usually being the one preparing the coffee. And a few years ago, I started mixing regular Colombian coffee half and half with freshly ground uh, decaf coffee beans. Now, ostensibly, it was because the straight caffeinated coffee upset Marianne's stomach, but I also realized fairly quickly that the decaf took the edge off of Carolyn. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm sure you all realize the leading role that Carolyn's played in, in providing assistance to students, as well as the faculty in use of uh, the Turnitin software for checking on plagiarism and other writing problems. And in the future, all such call, calls for help should be uh, forwarded to her in Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> and I'll be sure to put the necessary contact information up on the library's webpage. <laughs> About four or five years ago, Carolyn and our colleague Gian attended a conference in England exploring aspects of library self-assessment. Fortuitously, this was about the time that the library was preparing to conduct its uh, second LibQual or LiveQual user survey. As a result, the two of them had the rest of us all jumping through hoops and creating endless spreadsheets to crunch the survey results. I never realized just how much you could actually accomplish with Excel when somebody was holding your feet in the fire. <laughs> but it was really all for the good because uh, that assessment work that Carolyn and Gian had pushed really paid off in the extreme a couple years later when the library prepared its uh, its uh, uh, what for its program review. And all kidding aside, with people writing the obituary for the 20th century college library, that sort of self-awareness of the library's actual role is essential to its survival. So she really provided a, a service in picking up that, that, that particular thing and running with it. Now, as I get towards the end here, do you know what Carolyn and our provost have in common? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. And I'll bet none of you have ever actually seen Harvey play bassoon. But really, actually, no. But they're, they're both stocked in the lumps. Now, Carolyn graduated from Stockton in 1985 and then turned right around and endured an ungodly commute from down here up to Rutgers, New Brunswick to earn her library science degree in 1987. And I thought I had it bad commuting down from Cherry Hill. And then she turned right around and uh, while working here full time, she commuted to Rutgers Camden in order to achieve her master's in American history. So it's just bing, bang, boom. So that's the sort of energy she has and the sort of devotion that she's given to this institution. As a senator, uh, as on college committees, as a performer, as a librarian, as a teacher. I was doing a little, I was using Google, don't tell anybody, but I was using Google today, I was exploring uh, the Carolyn, and I discovered in 1975, Hurricane Caroline, that's I-N-E, came out of the Gulf, crossed over near Brownsville, Texas, and basically ravaged Mexico's Pacific coastline. That time, Florida dodged the bullet, but as she packs, for a move to Sarasota, someone might want to let the Sunshine State know that Tropical Storm Carolyn, that's L-Y-N, <laughs> is about to be upgraded to a Category 1 hurricane with winds expected to increase dramatically and landfall expected about June 20th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Carolyn, thank you. <laughs> we all know that's true. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I'll make this short because I don't want to sound like an Academy Award exception. <laughs> but I would like to thank everybody at Stockton because you've been so wonderful uh, to me both in good times and not so good times. You supported me every step of the way. Starting, shall we say, in 1983 when I came here as a Student. And I don't know if any of my professors are here, but the <coughs> Patrice Constantellos, William Lubinow, uh, Norma Grasso um, were um, my teachers, and I might have forgotten a couple of them. Some of them, unfortunately, have left the past, but I owe, I owe them a wonderful debt of gratitude. And I'm so happy that I landed at Stockton and they kept me. I was so amazed at that. And it turned out that it shaped my life so much in every way. Um, and the uh, SFT has been wonderful, a Buckingham Cabinet's party, and fighting for great conditions for us here at Stockton. And, and they have wonderful big parties, don't they? And, um, and, and all of you have been just marvelous. And I hope you will all come on down. <laughs> I'm in Sarasota, Florida, and so I will be June 20th. And I'm hoping to see you all there. So stag me all
check for saying the nice things about the SFTs. <laughs> Thank you. I think my favorite part of the talk was that Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you know, yesterday when I bumped into you in the hall, you said you were trying to figure out who the three people were that didn't like you, but maybe more didn't like you. Well, when I, I figured I would go first, because Geller is the first alphabetical name here. Oh. And, so, and now you put me on after David, and so now you're on my list. But uh -oh. <laughs> so we're so... Okay. There are certain people I try not to follow. Uh, it's kind of fun to get up and talk about Mike. Mike and I came to Stockton in 1976 uh, as part of the same cohort. And watching people from your own cohort retire, <coughs> excuse me, uh, gives one pause. And I've been thinking a lot about those earlier days. Uh, Mike and I were younger, thinner, uh, had longer hair, he had hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still do. <laughs> and we were a little bit less gray. Uh, I wasn't even sure that I liked him. <laughs> he was very sure of himself, uh, strongly opinionated, frequently expressed his opinion, and didn't easily change his mind. We often disagreed. In that sense, not much has changed. <laughs> Seriously, over the years, I've come to really respect his judgment. And he's often been the person that I've gone to when I needed serious advice about something I was going to do or something I was thinking about doing. Because Mike is the one person I knew who would call it like he saw it and tell me exactly what I needed to hear, even if I didn't think it was what I needed to hear. <laughs> Uh, Mike and I have talked about all sorts of issues, and he's a fascinating guy to talk to. Uh, New Jersey politics, creationism, union negotiations, <laughs> dealing with teenage daughters, uh, <laughs> Mullica Township politics, for the three of you in here who are still politically connected, Larry Angel. Uh, his life on the school board, uh, democratic politics. I've admired his dedication to teaching and to engaging his students. Uh, he takes precepting incredibly seriously. Virtually every summer I can guarantee that somewhere along, while I'm enjoying myself in Utah, my phone is going to ring and it's going to be Mike asking a question about what geology course this incoming transfer or this incoming freshman ought to be in because they've got AP credits or some funny complication. Uh, he spends a lot of time thinking about what he's going to do in the classroom and how it's going to affect people, or affect his students. Uh, when you talk to his students, what they talk about is how much they learn. Uh, he, better than anybody else I know, knows how to write multiple guest questions. He's my role model. And in my introductory class, when I say that the exam is going to be largely multiple guest questions, I look at them out, and about, there's always a significant fraction of my class that's environmental studies majors. And I say, how many of you have had uh, Mike Geller? And these hands go up, and I say, well, think Mike Geller questions. And they go, oh. <laughs> so you know, and you know what, what he's doing. I was delighted when Mike became Enville Program Coordinator. He is a superb administrator. Uh, he's the guy, like Carolyn, who asked, who's going to get this done? When are we going to get it done? Shouldn't we put this report together? He asked those critical questions and then prods us with a barrage of emails to uh, make sure we actually get them done. Uh, when he sends you an email and asks for your input and you don't respond and then you don't like the result, he points out that you didn't respond. <laughs> Tough. We didn't always agree. Uh, but he always had the interests of the program and the college foremost in his mind. Our program is better for his years at the helm. He's created quite a legacy in his time at Stockton. Uh, his role in AFT leadership, uh, his years on the campus hearing board, which nobody even thinks about. 
the hundreds of students and preceptees that he has affected over the years, as well as stray lost souls wandering through who happened to encounter him. Uh, his guide to the Pine Barrens ecology, uh, his sketches. I don't know how many of you have seen that. He's really quite a sketch artist. His leadership in environmental studies and the friends that he's influenced and who are going to miss having him around. And I'm one of those. Mike, I wish you the best. So the big question is, can I hold it together? <laughs> <laughs> this is an auspicious occasion uh, for me, Bob Helsbeck. First time we've ever agreed on anything. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know how lucky you are. Uh, I know how lucky I've been. And I've been lucky because I've had all of you around me. Um, working at Stockton for the years I've worked and for other people who've been here as long, you realize Stockton is a little bit like a little village, a little village in Eastern Europe. To me, that makes sense. We've had our share of the The difference between this and, and, and any other little village is we have such a marvelous cast of characters here. And I mean that in the fondest sense. You are the life of a bunch of people. Um, You've been exasperating and stimulating, uh, often at the same time. <laughs> You've never been boring. Uh, there's a strain of decency that runs through this institution, I think emanating from the faculty and the professional staff, that's, that's really profound. Uh, you care for your students. Uh, you, you know that when a student thanks you, you know that they can't pay you back, and the only thing you can tell them to do is for them to pass it on to somebody else, to do the good, the good work with somebody else. And so for all those years where you've tolerated me and my idiosyncrasies, and uh, I, I thank you so much. It, it, it has meant so much to be a part of this institution. And it will be really hard for me to leave. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>